info blocks, uh, combining info. DNS secure uh, DNS networking and security. Let mm -hmm. me give a little bit of back a little little bit of a background. So first of all, info blocks is the market leader again not me pumping, but just by market share and what's called DDI. And this is the combination, the integration of DNS, DHCP, mm -hmm. uh, and IPAM. Essentially, it governs who gets to go across the network and what are, what are the conditions uh, for that. DNS is domain, uh, domain, domain name system. Say that three times fast. <laughs> uh, and they have put together a service to do that. And not only is this service used on-prem, but also across all the major uh, public clouds. So I put them in the hybrid multi-cloud uh, uh, category. The other thing we've learned, though, is DNS is not necessarily as secure as it needs to be, mm -hmm. right? If, if, let's say, you're running DNS or DHCP via Microsoft Active Directory, uh, super vulnerable to DDoS attacks, where basically people come in and spoof the spoof the credentials okay That's and it's becoming more and more um a a trend right i mean it's very easy what the hackers go after it's literally how much bang can i get for my buck okay mm -hmm. what can i go after and what um new ceo scott harrell who came in from cisco did is he i wouldn't say he pivoted the company but what he did is he very more clearly articulated what the company does, okay, which is aligning networking and security at the DNS uh, level. In fact, there is a, a platform that they have, and it's called Blocks One. Mm -hmm. They also issued a their cybersecurity report as well. And right before RSA, they outlined uh, some really nasty botnets that... Uh, that uh, started over in in Russia, mm -hmm. right? Every security company uh, needs to do this. Yes. So, uh, first off, I, I like I like what the company is doing. It is absolutely addressing a need that's out there. And oh, by the way, if your networking uh, folks are already using the service, why wouldn't you uh, pay the nominal amount to have it protected um, yeah. as as well? So it, it 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 just makes sense. And what the company brought out is a new service called lookalike domain monitoring which uh, again improves security by identifying lookalikes uh, to impersonate brands uh, slightly altered to be a mimic of the uh, original which you know i don't know if this is just because i'm old or wise or something i always look at that do domain name to make sure that it's it's absolutely categorically uh, what 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 it is? By the way, you would expect this to show up in your browser, right, with the lock and key or the, but but it has to be yeah. identified first. And if it's not That's identified, right. it's it's not going to work. So, uh, congratulations to uh, Scott uh, and crew. I've got my eyes uh, on this company, and I'm sure Will would have some brilliant things to say <laughs> if he weren't in Europe on his honeymoon. But don't worry, Will, you missed it. You're eating uh, croissants and drinking coffee, which I don't know. Maybe that's more fun than, than being here live in the pod. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think he's missing it. But, you, you know, what you, you talk about, um, you, you talk about what they're doing, and that is one of the biggest vulnerabilities of, of DNS, right? Um, it's that kind of spoofing of the name with the slight alteration. Uh, and they've, they, they put some numbers up on their site about um, how much more, uh, secure uh, that DNS service becomes for companies uh, when when they deploy InfoBlocks. Super interesting. But they're another one where I looked at their, um, I was looking through their cybersecurity report and it's just, again, it's staggering for those, you know, for those who are listening who yeah. you kind of just think, you know, security is somebody else's problem and, you know, you know, there's a security team takes care of it, takes care of it, you know, it, it, it's staggering. L yeah, look at this. Two million dollars. The average average breach is two million is two million dollars in cost to an organization. And you know, to a Pfizer, to an American Airlines, to a huge company, that's a cost that can be absorbed, even though it's you know it's it's not good. To smaller companies, that could kill you, right? Exactly. Uh, that could be the end of your your uh, organization. And this is the other thing I find interesting. Uh, you know, email and, and phishing attacks are always popular vectors. Um, because they're so easy to spoof, 
But cloud was another one that kind of threw me off. You know, attacks from originating from cloud services. See, it's the second largest attack vector that uh, hackers are taking advantage of. And I think we blindly put our trust in cloud services and assume that there is, you know, there is absolutely no vulnerability that comes from that particular uh, service we're consuming when there absolutely is. And not that the cloud isn't secure, but, you know, it's a, uh, there's a false trust we put in a lot of these, um, a lot of these services that perhaps we shouldn't. Uh, and, and to what you're saying, I think, you know, working with a company like Infoblox, it's not just about product and technology. It's about leaning on all the experience they have as an organization uh, and all of the uh, all of the threats and all of the uh, scenarios they've played through. Um, yeah, and I love I love uh, Scott Harrell's lineage at Cisco. I mean, uh, Cisco has, you know, absolutely doing security and networking, the combination of the two, the two companies are approaching it differently. You've got hardcore DNS here, right? Is, is kind of at the root of a, of a specific uh, kind of, kind of defense, but good stuff. Good stuff here. 